So anyone who's been watching my channel for a while would know that when I first switched to Linux, I switched straight to Arch Linux. And you might be wondering why I did that. So today I'm going to explain exactly why. But if you are new around here, remember to subscribe and ding that little bell icon down below and that'll really help the channel out a lot. I'm trying to hit 100 by the end of the year and we're getting closer and closer every single day. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today is another scorching hot day as always in Australia when it's in the spring or summer. So hopefully you don't hear the air conditioner on in the background. It shouldn't be too audible because it is a ducting air conditioning system. But if it is noticeable, I might just have to re-record the section. So I would say my first biggest reason for switching to Arch Linux as opposed to something like say Debian or Ubuntu or Mint because these are really good distros. I've explained why in a video how your distro doesn't really matter ultimately, but they are good starting points for a lot of people. So the reason that I picked Arch as opposed to any of these other systems is because I wanted a practical blank slate. So what I mean by this is, so there are a couple of distros out there that you could really consider, I guess, blank slate Linux installations. So things like Arch, things like Gen2, things like just doing Linux from scratch. The reason that I didn't pick Gen2 is because compiling your uh, kernel is stupid and I don't want to do that. I didn't pick Linux from scratch because I want to actually be able to, I guess, have a working system within a reasonable amount of time. And I don't want to have to dig through so much documentation to work out any single problem because if I did everything from scratch, my solution would probably be customized exactly to my system and I don't really want to deal with that. But Arch is a good, I guess it's weird to call Arch a middle ground for usability because it is pretty low level when it comes to Linux distributions. But it's a good middle ground, I guess, between the really user-centric distros like Ubuntu, which are great for most new users, and the absolute bare minimum like Linux from scratch. Arch gives me a very solid, I guess, baseline to work from where I can build up pretty much the exact system that I want to work on, but it comes with the nice defaults. Like it has a package manager built into it, for example, and there is the AUR support. And there's just some nice things that are there that make it a bit easier than going strictly from the absolute base. So I can actually build up a system in a reasonable amount of time. Because if you've never installed Arch Linux yourself and you don't actually know what it's like when you first install it, Basically, all it does is drops you into a TTY, and that is all. You don't have a graphical manager, you don't, you don't have anything. Basically, you just have whatever comes with the Linux kernel, and some nice extra things on the top, like your package manager. Uh, I don't even think it comes with any extra drivers, just what comes with the kernel. Your programs actually build from... Actually, no, you don't even get your programs to build from the AUR. That comes in a separate package. I think that's in base devel. But basically, it just puts you in a TTY and you can do anything you want from there. You can install a desktop environment, you can install a window manager like I have. Or you could even just, I guess, write one yourself if you wanted to. Just download a C++ compiler or a C compiler, just write one from scratch. There's nothing stopping you there. Whilst distributions like Ubuntu are nice for beginners because they come with a desktop environment already pre-installed with them, I didn't want that. I wanted to build up my system the way that I wanted it because I'm not the kind of person who likes to, I guess, hop between distros. I want to have a working system that I can get practical work done, but I also want to be able to customize it to the absolute extreme. So I guess my second biggest reason for wanting to use Arch as opposed to one of the more user-centric distros is because I wanted to have at least some understanding of what's happening in the background of my system. So. I recently did a video where I installed Ubuntu and basically it's just a graphical installer. You click through and it just does everything magically, which is nice. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's absolutely great for people who just want a working computer as quickly as possible. Because I think that video took me, it was about 11 minutes long with all the downloads cut out. And that's just how easy it is to install Ubuntu. But I wanted to understand things like, say, what network manager I'm using, how my partitions are made, how to actually remove partitions, setting up things like my locale, and just a lot of these basic things are installing my base set of fonts so I can actually use my system at all, 
downloading my own application launcher. A lot of these things that are handled in a lot of the more user-centric distros, I wanted to be able to do this myself. So if something does break, I can actually understand where in my system that break actually possibly exists, as opposed to say, something breaks in Ubuntu and you're probably going to look up, this is broken on Ubuntu, how do I fix it? Whereas say if, I don't know, D-Menu, my application launcher breaks, I can look up D-Menu and say, okay, so is there a bug that exists currently for D-Menu like this? Or is this the first time that this bug is actually appearing? Or is it related to some other application that I'm running that is maybe conflicting with D-Menu? When you actually install everything yourself, you get a much deeper understanding of this. As I mentioned before with the practical baseline, you get the exact same thing from Linux from scratch, but it's so much harder to actually understand where all of these problems are coming from because it may have something to do with you breaking that baseline because you can build up that same baseline with Linux from scratch, but when you use Arch, you at least know that the baseline is solid or at least it should be. Whereas if you're doing it with Linux from scratch, there may be something even further down than the application launcher that's breaking that's causing some issue with your system. And I just don't wanna to have to deal with that. The next reason I would say is, so I think this one is, it's not, I guess, as important, but it's kind of important to me. I just think Arch Linux is cool. I wanna just be able to build up my system exactly the way I want it to. I wanna just, have all of this stuff customized exactly the way I want to do. I just think that is cool to be able to build up your system like that because I've been using Windows my entire life. There was a period where I used Mac OS and on those systems, you just don't get much customization. Maybe you can change some color themes around. Maybe you can do some other things, but you don't get that level of customization that you get when you're using a Linux distro. And I just wanted to experience that as much as possible so I could, I guess, I don't know, enjoy just customizing my system exactly the way that I wanted it to be. I know this is kind of a repeat of an earlier point, but I just think it's cool that you can do just whatever you want on your system when you're running Linux. And the last and absolutely most important point by far, no questions about it, is the bragging rights. Arch Linux is just a cool distro all around and Obviously, you're going to take that as an excuse when people mention like, oh, I've started using Linux. Oh, what are you using? Oh, I'm using Ubuntu, I'm using Debian. Oh, that's cool. I'm using Arch Linux. The only people who have more bragging rights over you at that point are the Gen 2 people and the Linux from scratch people. But we're just not going to talk about them because uh, I guess they're not human or something. I don't want to deal with that. That's way too much work. I can't imagine why you'd ever want to put that much effort into getting a system working because... In the end, what I wanted is I wanted something that I could customize as much as I wanted, but I also wanted something that I could get some real work done because I make these videos daily, I program, I have uni, and I just wanted to have a system that I could customize as much as possible, do whatever I wanted with it, not have any defaults that I have to get rid of to make my system work exactly the way I wanted it to, but also be able to, in a day or so, spin up a system that I can get some real work done, I can get my coding done, I can get my video editing done, I can get my image editing done, and I can just get real work done without having to, I guess, worry about anything else. So this isn't really a reason why I use Arch Linux, it's more of a thing that I just don't really care about. So I know that when people talk about Linux gaming, they'll typically talk about it in the context of Ubuntu or Manjaro or a Pop OS, I guess, that's also a pretty popular one for gaming. I haven't played a video game in a good, I don't know, six months or so. So that wasn't really something that I guess I took into consideration. But if that is, then yeah, go use one of those distros. But for me, I just, as long as I can get my graphics drivers working well enough that I can do video editing, I don't really care about anything else. If I want to play some video games, I'll just fire up my PS4 and go play something on that. So I feel like this video might have turned a bit into, I don't know, a bit rambly towards the end. I hope it still made sense and you guys actually got something enjoyable out of it. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you're new around here, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below and you'll probably get updates, but as always, YouTube can never be trusted to push updates to anyone. So also go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably get updates there. 
So a couple of days ago, by the time this goes up, I actually got a retweet by Ubuntu, and I got followed by Ubuntu and also Alan Pope, which is awesome. And I just wanted to mention that in a video because I feel like that is a massive achievement. And what better place to mention it than in the video where I talk about why I'm using Arch Linux and not Ubuntu. So if you guys are watching that, I don't know, I hope you enjoy it. And I have no problem with Ubuntu. It is a great distro. I just don't want to use it because I just want to be able to do everything that I want with my system without having to deal with defaults. But for people who aren't insane and people who want a system that will just work in like 15 minutes, Ubuntu is amazing, Manjaro is amazing, Mint is amazing, pretty much everything else is great for that. But that's not for me. I just wanted my system to be my system. I'll put a link in that corner for the playlist that this video is in so you guys can check out some random other Linux content that I put up. Don't know what's going to be in there. I can't actually remember what's in that playlist. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.